Okay, last time we read the Varmir chapter, so let's have a look at some of the secrets we learned from the Skin Changer. South of the Wall, skin changing and warging is basically unheard of. A myth. It's considered to have maybe happened amongst the ancestors in the North many years ago. But no longer. Beyond the Wall, they are known to exist. The wildlings shun them and fear them, but also revere them as well so long as they keep to themselves. We hear from Baramir that his parents believed he belonged with his own kind, and he was six when he began to bond with the family dogs, leading to his discovery and exile. He wasn't exiled alone, though. His father apparently knew of another of Baramir's kind, who he could send him off with, which, when you hear of it from Baramir's point of view, we don't know exactly how his brother dies, but he doesn't seem to recall any remorse for it. He just seems upset that his mother is crying for the other boy. Realistically, if you were his parents and you found out that your son had these powers, you've just lost one of your children. The other one is likely going to make your whole family because they still have another daughter of Miha or Meha, however you want to say it. Their whole family is likely to be shunned from their village. So, best thing they can do is send the boil. But yeah, weirdly no remorse from Varamir. We'll come back to that. So, he's sent to live with Hagen, who is a skin changer, bonded to a wolf, so he's technically a war. He becomes his mentor and teaches Varamir as he grows and learns to use his abilities. He takes Varamir to trade with the Night's Watch and to meetings with other skin changers, or at least one that we know of. He opens Varmir's eyes to the way of survival for a skin changer beyond the wall, and also warns him a lot. There are some rules that Hagen tells Varmir, and we don't know that they are legit skin changer laws that they all abide by, but it seems like that is likely to be the case. Seems like if they have these gatherings, they would have agreed these things amongst themselves. Ways of living that doesn't completely destroy who they are, I guess. I I don't know. Where do these laws come from? It's a thought. But I do believe that they are probably something that all skin changers live by and so are probably expected to abide by. I mean, he must have gotten them from somewhere to be so strict with them as well. They are, to eat of human meat is an abomination, to mate as wolf with wolf, is an abomination, and to seize the body of another man is the greatest abomination of all. Hold up, we know of a character who has done that, seized the body of another man, Bran with Hodor. Varamir has lived his whole life inside his human body and sending his consciousness into other animals' bodies. We only know of him trying to claim Thistle's body from his experience in that prologue and it was not a successful one. Bran continually takes control of Hodor's body, shushing him at Queen's Crown and walking inside Blood Raven's cave as Hodor. Hodor initially fought Bran, but Bran soothes him and overpowers him. You know, he reassures Hodor that it's only temporary, and he'll give his body back. Hodor later stops fighting so much, and has cowled to his body being seized by Bran, like one of Baramir's animals would for him. Which, I know I'm going on a total tangent here, but I, it makes me think, if those of feeble minds are easier to control, well then, dead people are easy to control too, wouldn't you think? So it seems like it's the child of, you know, children of the forest magic, controlling the whites. The children of the forest are evil, okay? Right, anyway, to Bran and his body seizing. Thankfully, him and Hodor have a good relationship, so we don't see this go badly for him just yet. But it does make me think how other people might view him having broken these laws. And he is also supposed to be the next Blood Raven, and he's committing an abomination. Right, so back to Baramir, though, and his abilities. Yep, he's committed all three of the above uh, abominations. He's eaten men's flesh as a wolf. The first time was probably when he pushed Hagen's consciousness out of Hagen's wolf and then ate Hagen's heart. 
Nice. And he's walked into Sly when she's in here and One Eye is taking her. And he's tried to claim Thistle. When he does go to these meetings, or at least the one we know he's been to, it's a gathering of all kinds of skin changers. The wargs, those who are bonded with wolves, are the most numerous. But others have bonded with goats, boars, owls, ravens, hawks, a shadow cat, all sorts. And I'm pretty sure we don't hear of any others that have bonded with more than one animal. So Varamir is pretty powerful. But Varamir, he got greedy. And he started collecting his crew. He's bonded with not one, but three wolves, a snow bear, a shadow cat, and Arel's eagle. It's interesting as well that Hagen tells him, You take one, that's a marriage. The wolf part is in you from that day on. And you're a part of him. Both of you will change. Other beasts were best left alone, the hunter declared. Cats were vain and cruel, always ready to turn on you. Elk and deer were prey. Wear their skins too long, and even the bravest man became a coward. Bears, boars, badgers, weasels. Hacken did not hold with such. Some skins you never want to wear, boy. You won't like what you'd become. And imagine that power... If you're able to take over somebody else's body, you would become something crazy, surely. Um, the thing with Varamir, though, is that all of his animals are predators. The wolves, the bear, the shadow cat, they're all hunters. So he takes one and he feels their apex predator personality pushing through, taking over his own, is what I think has happened anyway. And maybe that is what made him turn on Hagen in the first place. What do you think? Um, survival of the fittest, maybe? It's just that predator instinct. Do you think, even as a child, he couldn't help himself? He felt no remorse? But anyway, back to Varamir's death and what we learn from that. As his consciousness leaves his body, jumps to thistles, and then it seems goes through... The weirwood's eyes is first for him saying through that. He can see his dying body twitching on the floor and the last of his life form leaving it, leaving thistles. His spirit, or consciousness, drifts through the clouds, snow, so watery elements, animals, earth, trees, so every element of nature, right? Mm. Before landing in his wolf's body, his final resting place. Which must be the same thing as what happened to Aurel's consciousness before it found his eagle, which Varamir then took. One quick side thought, though, about the elements. No fire, though. Is this because there's just none nearby, or because fire is the element that burns, kills, destroys all? And is ultimately going to be what can destroy the things that are being controlled, the light walkers. Yeah, weird. But then, hmm... That makes me think about the candle theory. Anyway, right. They say you forget, Hagen told him, a few weeks before his own death. When the man's flesh dies, his spirit lives on inside the beast. But every day his memory fades, and the beast becomes a little less warg, a little more wolf, until nothing of the man is left, and only the beast remains. So, how do the things that we learn from Varamir affect the other skin changers or wargs that we know about, mainly the other Stark children? Well, we're going to be looking at that next time, so I'll catch you then. Don't forget to like and subscribe, turn on your notifications, and have a good day. Cheerio! He is sent to live with Hagen, a skin changer, who is bonded with a wharf, uh, 